If you like using debit over credit, don't you think it's time to also get rewarded? Well, now you can with Discover Cashback Debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases, plus there are no fees, period. We're talking date nights, thrifting the latest trends, nights out with your friends, and it's now earning you cash back with Discover Cashback Debit. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashbackdebit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Give Them Lala podcast. It is hump day, which is like one of my most favorite days of the week, mostly because I get to listen to myself yet again. (laughs) Um, I have a really fun guest. And I learned about you on Watch What Happens Live. Mm. Yeah. With Bryn. <laughs> I have Tyler Cameron. And we were just talking about how the trolls were out to play. Because when I had Bryn on, I said it was very random that you were from Florida. And are they called Floridians? Yeah, Floridians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Floridians came for me. First of all, hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to we, be here. We just shove it right in. No loop here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. You love great. it? Great. Spit on it. Let's roll. Oh, my God. <laughs> Spit on it. <laughs> Down and dirty. Sweat. I love it. Oh, I'm blushing. All right. We're running. All right. <laughs> um, a boy hasn't made me blush in a long time. All right. Wow. Well, you need to be around more Floridians. Oh. Appa- Ooh, mm. Look at him go. I don't know about that. Maybe just you. Okay. Why you were telling me if I learned who was from Jupiter, Florida, it wouldn't be so random. Yeah, no, I think Jupiter has like completely exploded in like recent years. Like Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Venus, Serena, like every golfer you could think of lives there. Nick Saban just bought a house. Like a lot of NFL coaches live there. Like some like Celine Dion used to live there. Like Jupiter's a crazy place. Wow. Where in Florida is this? Located? Just above Palm Beach. Oh, Money. so it's like fabulous. It's fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't they have amazing golf courses up uh, there too? Amazing golf courses. Yeah. We have like the best intercoastal waterways, so, like the best boating. I love all of those things. Mm-hmm. You like it. I would love it because coming from Utah, that's very random. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm allowed to tell someone like, whoa, where you're from is random because when you come from Utah, it's like. Or you should just get out of LA more. Uh, or I should get out of LA more. I've yeah. been here 10 years and it's suffocating. You spend a lot of time here? No. You're so lucky. <laughs> yeah, I, I like <laughs> to think so. Why don't you spend a lot of time here? Do you spend a lot of time in New York? I, LA is great. I think it's grown on me. Mm-hmm. Um, my first experience here was awful. They put me like in a hotel for like three months in downtown LA. Why? Oh. Why? What I were you I was shooting a show, uh, for, like a Quibi show back in the day. Okay. And so I was like, well, I don't ever want to live in this place ever again, uh-uh. you know. Um, but I think in recent years, I've had some friends from back home move to like Venice Beach and stuff like that. And like hanging around those areas, I, I can get down with that more. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the west side is where it's at. But we were talking about how you used to go, you call it Zion. I call it Zion. You wrote about that place in your book, which is yep. in southern Utah. Yep. I have never been. It's crazy. You, it, you're from there. I'm from you there. You have a place apparently in St. George, like right around the corner. Like, what are you doing? Right around the corner. <laughs> and people always ask me about all of these great places in Utah, the skiing. I feel like where you're from, that's where I should have been. Because I just want to be on a boat Mm -hmm. and cover myself in sunscreen every single day. You would have thrived. I would have thrived. We'll never know. Never know. Unless we get married and have babies. All right, well. (laughs) Which then I'll make you sign something that says you must go away after. Is that okay? That's a deal. (laughs) I think it might be be positive for our relationship if it goes that way. (laughs) He's down. Okay. He's down. So you first stepped onto this scene. Were you the bachelor or were you a contestant? A contestant. What was that like for you? It was a blast. Like, I, I, you know, I see a lot of stuff about like how hard reality television can be. And I think it takes a special person to get into that space and really do it. Um, for me, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. Like, I don't take myself too seriously. I have fun. And it was me and a bunch of dudes in a house playing spades every day, drinking beer, having fun. And we get to talk to a girl every now and then. And we get to try and build a relationship with her like, and travel the world. Like, what's not cool or fun about that? Right. I think the hardest part would be getting out of that limo. Oh, yeah. I blacked out. You did? <laughs> yeah. When I came out of that limo, I had no idea. Like, I had this whole thing I was going to say. I remember I was like, I traveled all these miles just to see you smile. Like, some corny shit like that, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> so they don't, they don't give you what you have to say? They try to help you, you know, so you don't completely, like, look like a complete bore, you right. know? And... So I had that whole line. I was the last person to go. So I watched everybody go. I watched everybody do their thing. It was like 1230 by the time I got to go. I was, 
And I still came out there and like blacked out. I'm like, like had no idea what I was saying. Oh, you lost all your game? No, never lose my game. But <laughs> never that. It, it was. It was, I went to robot mode. It just. It just kept going. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Because some of those moments are cringy. Like I've. I have to be honest. I've never watched The Bachelor or Bachelorette. I watched the first episode of The Golden Bachelor, mm -hmm. and I. I'm like, Mom, if this guy appeared in your life, I would be totally fine calling him stepdad. Mm -hmm. Like he's amazing. But some of those women coming out, I'm like, this feels like the hardest part. And it was like a little cringy. But because they're like kind of older, it's sweet. But so like here's the thing. I think like when you come out, they, they're going to give you some crazy ideas to do, you know. And some people, they pitch them to and and they will come out like an idiot. And like mm -hmm. it's on you to say yes or no to things. And okay. I think you try and balance this line of like I'm trying to do good by the producers because you think they're going to help you stay on and stay alive longer, you know? Right. So, like, the producers will come up with me with ideas all the time. Like, you should do this, you should do that. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and then I'd see someone else do it. I'm like, thank God I didn't God. do that. And then, like, they would be like, like, let's go grab flowers. I was like, I'll do that. Like, that's something I would do, you know? Yeah. And so, but I guess maybe I was a little bit of a bore to them, but because I didn't do all the crazy dumb stuff they wanted me to do. I would do some funny shit, but, like, it wouldn't have to do with her. But okay. You, you made it pretty far, right? This was Hannah Brown season, by the way, mm -hmm. which I didn't watch, but I've seen clips from, and that was a great season. You made it to. I was number two. Number two. Got it. Oh, you didn't. Do they give roses on The Bachelorette? Yes. So you just didn't get the rose? I didn't get the last one. Why do you think that was? I think, uh, I don't think she believed. I, I think she, we really liked each other a lot. Um, I think she, I was always the, uh, like, kind of the guy coming from behind. Like, the guy she had the relationship with. It was always a strong relationship from the start. And our relationship didn't get stronger towards the end. And uh, probably because I was a little bit shy at first. Okay. Like, I didn't I didn't speak to her for, like, the first two days. Really? Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, when it comes to, like, crazy settings, I kind of, like, take a step back, and then, like, I introduce myself slowly. Oh, you you retreat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you signed up to do that show, like, were you looking for love? Like, how old were you? I was looking for an adventure. Mm. I was 26. So you were, a, how old are you now? 30. Okay, so you, you were a baby then, you're still kind of a baby now. Mm -hmm. Men mature much differently than women. I'd say I agree with that. Yes, yeah. I think most people would. <laughs> so you were looking for an adventure, you didn't know if you'd find love, but you were just kind of throwing it, it to the universe. Yeah, exactly, and, and like, it was, if I, if it happened and I started like this girl on the show, then great, I'd chase it, and that's what did happen. Like, I really did like this girl, I think there could have been a future, and I chased it, you know, and I gave it, I gave her my all, gave the show my all, gave, I just put it, like, I don't like to do anything uh, calculated or contrived, like, I just, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something 100%. I love that. Commitment. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find. It is. Do they allow men or women to be a contestant if they have been married before and have children? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that can get sticky. You can. Right? Well, that's good TV, isn't it? It's great TV, exactly. but I feel like if I'm going on to a show, whether I'm competing or I'm making the choice, like, I, I'm i not doing that for any other reason than I have tried to find love, and it's just not happening. I think so I've I, heard of, like, engagements being broken off to go on the show, or, like, people, like, to, like getting like in the middle of a divorce going on the show. Like, I think things like that have happened. I'm That's sure. Crazy. And don't they bring them on? This You don't have to confirm or deny this because it might be a little spicy of a question, but I've heard that they really pry into your life before casting you officially on the show. I'm talking like bank account. like Oh, they do like, do they, they do a background check? They didn't, they background didn't do my check. bank account. They would have got rid of me <laughs> quick. <laughs> Wait, like, really? Yeah, like 200 bucks to my name. Like uh, I would have not been the guy for that. Really? Like credit checks, all that? They don't, no, wow. They, they do like a deep dive, like making sure you haven't done any like serious crimes or mm. done anything wrong like that. Um, but yeah, I was broke as a joke going on that show. I was like, yeah, I'm a general contractor. I got my license. Yeah. I haven't made a dollar doing it yet. I was in the middle of building my first house. Well, that's great for people to know. You don't have to be rich to go. Like, you can just be, like, an, an average Tyler to mm. go on the show. An yeah. average Tyler. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So where are you at now with love? Are you searching for it? Are you in yeah, a I'm relationship? Definitely, I'm definitely putting myself back out there and dating and, you know. But I'm doing it back home. Like, I'm doing it in Jupiter. Mm. Yeah. You know, I've, I've kind of built my whole world. Ever since COVID happened, I came back to Jupiter. I was living in New York City. And came back to Jupiter, and I kind of just 
settled down there and like realized like this is where I, want, I need to be, not want to be, but I need to be here for just like my own sanity and like I need to work every day. I need to have a job. Like I have my construction company again. I have restaurants. I have my my foundation. So like I'm always doing something. Damn. Every day. And if I was in like in New York or LA, I'd just be waiting for the next gig or the next job, and I I couldn't do it. Right. I would What's be your... I would be in the streets. And you just just because I creeped your Instagram, you just bought a house to flip, right? Yep. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So you're doing that under your construction company. I'm yeah. Assuming? Yeah. So I mean, I'm probably gonna live in it for a few years, but it's gonna okay. it's my it's my next project. I just did nine renovations this wow. past year. Wow. So. That's a lot. Yeah, it was a beast. Kicked my ass. And then what's your foundation? Uh, I started a foundation to honor my mother. Uh, she passed away right before COVID happened. And uh, so now we give out full scholarships to students. And we do some community redevelopment that we're about to dive into. But we just we just added up. We gave out, we've given out $175,000 in scholarships wow. in the past two wow. years. Um, we got we have five girls now under full scholarship. Two, our first girls are like, like three quarters of the way of scholarship. Wow. And so this year we're hoping to give 10 more kids full tuition. And what what are like the guidelines? Is there something that they have to follow in order to get the scholarship? Well, uh, you know, I made it so like someone like me can get it, you know? Yeah. Uh, Cuz I was no good student. So like you got to have like a 3.0, which is like a B average, you know. Um uh but community service, be a leader and interview well. And, that's so incredible. Yeah. So, that's my pride and joy. As it should be. That's really amazing. I was never great in school. Can I tell you? Like, first of all, I don't listen. I'm listening to you. But, like, (laughs) you put me in a school setting, and I check out. Mm -hmm. And then if you ask me to read something and then retain what I read, that's just... When someone tells me they went to college, I'm like, so you can retain knowledge. And I respect that. (laughs) Did you go to college? Yeah, I did. Where'd you go? I went to Wake Forest undergrad and then FAU for grad school. Amazing. But I was never, like, a good student. I just, like, learned to be. I had to, like, I had to because I wanted to play football, and that was my dream. Oh, you're a football player. I was, yeah. You were. Mm-hmm. Did and you play j- college ball? Played college ball. Okay. Got cut by the Ravens twice. Got Then I got hurt trying to go back into the league, okay. and that was you it. got it there. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, you auditioned, or whatever it's for the Ravens. <laughs> I, yeah, I did my little dance for them. <laughs> <laughs> Cheerleading? Yeah. <laughs> Easton, wow. Easton and I grew up in a household that... Are you guys brother or sister? Yeah, yeah, this is my brother. Okay. The Ravens, because I was obsessed with Ray Lewis. The man. The man. So we grew up in a household where it was like, we were Ra- Utahns who were like, go Ravens. How random is that? You guys call yourself Utahns? I think Utahns. so, do we? That's, 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 that's even stranger than Floridians. I don't love Utah. No, it is it. a Utah. In fact, there was a point in time where I said my next baby was going to be named Utah, and then I presented this to my friends, and they were all like, no. veto that name. I like the name. I do, too. Isn't it kind of sick? I think, isn't like, uh, isn't there a movie with, uh, God, what's his name? The guy from Dirty Dancing. Where he was named Swayze, that? Swayze, Patrick? Swayze, yeah. and then is the, the guy who everyone loves, I think his name was like Johnny Utah. Yes, that is absolutely What's that movie? correct. I don't know the movie, but I Point know Break. It. Point Break. There we go. Yes. Yeah. There See, we go. So someone did make it cool, but yeah. my friends didn't dig it. Do you want children? Yeah, I want a lot of them. A lot. You want to like create a football team? Yeah, I need my Oh, well, that's a lot. That's 11 players <laughs> at least. Basketball team. Yeah. So I need I need I need to start in 5. I need a basketball team. Basketball team. Yeah. Okay, and when you think about your life, right? Everything mm-hmm. that's happened so far. Is there Someone that you have in mind where you're like, this is the girl that will forever be the one that got away. Like, if timing would have been different or if we could have just changed this. No, I'm glad they all went away. Really? (laughs) Look at that. Good riddance. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm glad they all went away. Really? Because when I look back now, I'm like, thank thank God it didn't work out because I wouldn't be where I am today, you know? I think every rejection or failure, like, it's all gotten me to a better place. Wow, I really didn't expect you to say that. Mm, there's no one that I'm like, damn, I wish, I, you know, no. And I've, and I've gone back and tried to check those boxes, and those boxes don't check. Really? Yeah. The math don't math. The math ain't mathing no more. So then what are you looking for, Tyler? What's your ideal? What you're talking about checking boxes that made me think of, are there, do you have a list? No, it's not necessarily a list. Um, I live, like, I live in Jupiter, Florida. Like, I'm going to live there my whole life, like, Unless you have some crazy life that's going to uproot me and something that's going to blow whatever I have away, you know, that's going to be a lot to take me out of Jupiter. Hmm. Um, Because 
I love my town. I love my people. I love my community. I want to be the high school football coach of Jupiter High School. Like, that is fucking adorable. That is. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what made me, and I want to just, I always want to be around it. You know, I got my family there. Um, um, so someone that wants to be in Jupiter is part of it, you know, and it's kind of hard to find someone you're dating in New York or LA that wants to do that. It sounds good when you're 40 or 50, but not when you're in your 20s and 30s. So is, is that a make or break? Kind of, it's kind. Of, it's not really necessarily a make or break. Like I date outside of it, you know. But I, I know now because I have all my work in Jupiter, all my focus in Jupiter. It's hard to really date or talk. To, like I feel bad talking to anybody outside of Jupiter because I don't give it as much. If it's not in my face, I can't really do much with yeah, it. Yeah, long yeah. distance is very, very hard. Mm-hmm. So let's just say you find this girl who's like, go Jupiter, never want to leave, got it tatted on my back. <laughs> <laughs> what else does she have to bring to the table besides um, living in Jupiter? No, um, you know, uh, I think the the one the one mantra I live by is like through love serve one another, and someone who's just like willing to go out and serve and help and and take care of you know whether it's the kids, you know, the community, whoever it is, is ready to go, ready to help. Um, but then also someone who's ready for adventure. I love to go. I love to to be out, and then. I don't know. I just, I just want someone to build something with, you know. I want someone to be alongside of me when I'm renovating these houses and, and building this business and trying to do these things. Like, that's what I want. I love that. That's beautiful. Does she have to want a lot of kids? No. I mean, I'll always have as many kids as I'm allowed to have. Okay. You know? But then I'll probably start adopting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to take a very special woman to be like, I'll only pop out two, and then you can adopt as many as you yeah, want. Yeah, But I'm over here. I only <laughs> want to claim the two. All right. And then does she need to work? Does uh, she need to have a job? Or could she be like a stay-at-home wife and mama? She she can be whatever she wants to be passionate about. Um, I think um, if you want to be a stay-at-home mama, be the best stay-at-home mom there is. If you want to work, be the best work, whatever you know it is. I think if you don't do anything, if you don't have passion or anything, you're going to live a, a lifeless life. And I think then you start looking to your partner for life, and that's a terrible place to be. And so I, I would look, I, if they want to work, be the best you can be, and I'll support it. If you want to be a mom, be the best mom you can be, and I'll support it. You're so cute. Yeah, you're like so cute, answer. and you're so the way you speak. And sitting on that couch, I'm looking at you, and I'm like, you know who you'd be great with. Bryn. I knew oh. I knew y'all were coming <laughs> Easton's for this. about to cut you. <laughs> Easton's gonna cut you. Why didn't fire. this, this no, work out? Agree. Are you pursuing Bryn? Is she pursuing you? Or is it just like you guys are chilling? I'm really asking. I think we're chilling. Questions. We're okay. chilling right now. Okay. Yeah. All what right. does that mean? Like you just text and stuff? I mean, we, we talked a little bit once like we had all the wild run, but I I like I said it's, it's so hard for me to keep it's up and like face. it's because I'm I'm buried at, I'm buried with work, I'm buried with everything I'm doing back home. I can't give myself, really. I can't give anyone what they deserve, truly. And she don't live in Jupiter. She don't live in Jupiter. <laughs> and that's the number one on the list. The number one on the list. You got to be ready to come home, you know? <laughs> she didn't even make the first point, the yeah. first checkoff. No. But, no, she is incredible. And I, I, I loved, like, doing that show with Brendan, getting to know Brent. Like We had, we had uh, drinks and stuff afterwards. We had a lot of fun. And... Like, Brent's a great girl. She's great. Brent could be that person, you know? But, yeah. you know, like I said, like, I just, I haven't given anything, any energy to, unless it's, like, around me or in front of me just because I'm swamped. Is the word dinner a stress trigger for you? We all have so much going on that the last thing we want to waste any brain power on is figuring out what's for dinner. Let me tell you how I alleviate that stress for me and my family. HelloFresh. HelloFresh ships pre-portioned ingredients with step-by-step instructions right to your front door. I don't have to worry about meal planning or even grocery shopping at this point. And HelloFresh offers 40 recipes to choose from every single week. They send quality proteins and fresh produce. We've been ordering from the family-friendly recipe menu lately, and I think we found a new favorite. The barbecue ranch chicken flatbread with double cheese, basically pizza, and everyone loved it. It took less than 30 minutes to make, but if you want something even quicker, HelloFresh has quick and easy recipes and 15-minute meals. That's less time than it takes to get takeout or delivery. So when you need dinner fast, don't open that delivery app. Think HelloFresh. 15 minutes or less and you'll have a yummy dinner on your table. Plus, HelloFresh is 20% cheaper than most takeout. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Lala and use code 50Lala for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Lala and use code 50Lala to get 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh. America's number one meal kit. 
Give Them Lala is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in the way of living your best life? Like you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't seem to do it? Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back, so your brain can work for you instead of against you. Therapy is a great way to learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself, and it's way more convenient with better help. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. BetterHelp is truly the best way to make your brain your friend. Give it a try. Visit BetterHelp.com slash GTL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash GTL. You're on special forces this season. And mm. by the way... I just watched last season, and my jaw was on the floor. I'm like, number one, this show is so good. For a second, it was a turnoff because I had never heard of Special Forces, and then it was like, Special Forces, Tom Sandoval, and I was like, ugh, (laughs) you know? (laughs) I don't know about this. But then I watched the first season and was like, this is so good, and became obsessed. And you guys are what, two, three episodes into your season? Tonight will be our third episode. Oh, my God. I can't wait to watch. Okay. When this came to you, had you seen the show before? Did you know what you were getting into? So they came to me about like a week and a half before we were supposed to leave for the show. And they're like, yeah, we want you to do this show. And I was I was into it. Like I, was, I just got done working on like a big project. And I was beaten up. I was like, all right, this will be like a vacation for me. And because every time I get like these chances to go do like these shows, I'm like, this is this is fun. This is not work, you know. And so I, so I was like, all right, I'm out. I'll go I'll go to this show. My agent was like, no, I don't think you should do it. It's a competition show. You don't want to be known for doing competition shows all the time. And I was like, all right, well, let me let me watch the show and let me get back to you. Watch the show. I was like, this is easy. I got this. Like, this is just Hollywood, foo-foo. This ain't going to be that hard. I told my agent. Like, we talked the next day. We kind of got a whole different opinion about the show after seeing it. Like, it's, not, it's not a competition show. It's, it's not that. It's a completely different genre. And so when when I said yes, I was like, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be that hard either. Like, it's just foo-foo Hollywood, L.A. Like, they just drive around in cars. They're not really running. They're not really actually doing hard stuff. I was fucking wrong. <laughs> it's the hardest damn thing I have ever did. And I, and I was a football guy. Like, I've done crazy training. I've, you know, gone to where I puked and they killed me and all these things. Nah, this was a whole nother level. Wait. It's insane. I'm obsessed with this season, by the way. Absolutely obsessed. And I'm blown away by like Jojo C was on it Savannah Chrisley Des Bryant I'm not gonna spoil anything for anyone but I'm already shocked at who's gone home and who's stayed and who's like really done amazing at the challenges because I you see a show like this you watch season one and I'm like oh the strong men are gonna come out on top that's just how it's gonna be it's all about strength but it's not there's the women who power through and dominate well let's be real I mean women Push life out of their cookies. Well, well, I, All right. Y- so y- y'all like, have a mental engine that just doesn't stop. Of right? course. Mm-hmm. And this is a mental game, from what I've seen. Like, there's some things that you got to go through, but like a lot of it is mental toughness mm-hmm. and how like it's ninety five percent mental. Yeah. Like you would what say it's you can nine- do to endure it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mentally. Because only t- only reason why you want to quit at things like because the physical stuff is hard, it's because your mind's quitting. But mm-hmm. what what the staff shows you and teaches you is. There's so much more in the tank than you ever put out there. And, like, they've got, like, like I can't wait for everyone to see next episode because they've gotten more out of me than I've ever gotten out of myself. Really? Yeah, and it, but it's because there's mental limitations you put on yourself. So this, you're talking episode three. So by the time this airs, episode three will have come out, but but obviously you can't spoil anything. Um, but Who's gone home so far? Oh, Black we- China or Angela? Angela, Ken- Tara, and Des Bryant. Tara Reed, Des Bryant. That's who I was shocked on. I guess we're spoiling. I was shocked. Des Bryant. Tara Reed, by the way, I don't know why I feel this way toward her. She seems like an angel of a human. And you were you helped her out, right? Like you mm-hmm. carried her bag. How is she in real life? Is she a sweet angel? She is sweet. You know, okay. and it, it's she, I feel like she's had just the hardest time, mm-hmm. you know, in Hollywood. And I feel like it's 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 a machine. It chews you up, spits you out, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I feel like she's suffered through a lot of bullying, a lot of, you know, it's it's hard. I think you've, we've all been through these moments in the light where the people come after you. 
Right. You know, and she's probably had way more than a lot of us have. And I saw a lot of things on socials that people were saying about Tara. And I'm like, how could someone like write this about another human being? So I'm sure you got to meet a lot of people on this show. And did you have any like going into it where you're like, oh, this person I know is going to be this way. This person I I mean, Scandaval was happening. Mm-hmm. You met you met him. Him, I keep on. I don't want to call him Scandival because he's not Scandival. <laughs> Sandoval, I'm like getting all tongue tied. Did you know that that existed? Were you balls deep in that before you got to know him? Just a tip. I was not balls. Um, I, I knew a little bit about it. Just a tip. Did you get balls deep? <laughs> no. Everyone else around, I was kind of like uh, association. I guess we were gang banging Tom about it. You know. What I mean? Wait, did people have a lot of questions for him? Yeah, like it was talked really? about a ton. You know. Um, like, uh, like just for instance, like they didn't show this part, but it was so funny. Like we, we are just getting on the vans to meet each other, and we're all doing intros of each other. And Tom goes, "I'm Tom Sandoval," and Jack Osborne goes, "Oh, it looks like we have a Scandoval." <laughs> and, but not, but but like, then he goes, then Tom kind of like she's like, "Yep." Uh, yeah, I was involved in a scandal, and then he did. But involved, Jack, you involved. were the scandal. You weren't just involved, <laughs> buddy. Did but, Jack know? But Jack didn't even know Sandoval was Scandoval. He just thought like the, he just knew the word, the and word. then knew Tom Sandoval, but and like just said it to be funny, but never knew the correlation of the two. That's hilarious. Oh, Jack Osborne is fucking hilarious, yeah. by the way. So funny, like also killing it, also killing mm-hmm. it on the show. He was like, he was like the there was like two dads of the show, him. And Bodie Miller. And those are the guys who like knew how to do survival stuff, knew how to make the fire. I was useless. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how to do anything. Yeah. So there's survival stuff coming up. For sure. Because we haven't, I mean, obviously it's all survival, but what we've seen so far is I call it the cold plunge. It obviously was a lot worse than that. But you're a fit guy. Had you cold plunged before? So that challenge was like, eh. No, I mean, that challenge, that challenge sucks no matter what. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I don't think I could do that. You could. You I could. I want you to go on special forces so bad because you I think you'd shock yourself. They're going to do, do it in Utah next year, they said, too. It'd be great. Homecoming. <laughs> oh, you could go home. You Are you serious? No, you're hang- lying. No. Okay. Oh. Home court advantage. I, <laughs> home court advantage. No, I think you'd surprise yourself. I think a lot of people on that show will end up surprising themselves. Do you have to tie a lot of ropes on that or no? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, like anything like rope tie? I had a, I, there was this one course that we had to do, and I had to... They put it's a sled and we gotta tie all these things to the sled and oh, we gotta God. we gotta race like, other teams, and I, I, so I'm like I hook my partner up to the sled, I'm tying everything up, you know. Yeah. And as soon as we kick off, my knots come un- un- <laughs> unfolded. <laughs> Shit goes help. everywhere. Do they teach you how we to knot? We go right it? to last place, like by far. <laughs> I'm like, no. and they're just, they're just ripping me apart. When it comes to no. knots, I hand it off to somebody yeah. else. Wait, do they teach you how to tie a proper knot no. before? No, you're they not. don't teach you, you shit. You know how to. You are, yeah. Thing. Being you a 30 are. old man, you should know how to tie a knot. I, I think I could tie a pretty solid knot, honestly. You think that until you have Until to. you got to wrap things around it, make things stick together. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing in life where we need to tie knots? Someone tells You'd me to surprised. tie a knot. I'm going, I'm doing a bow. And that's yeah, I got a friend who struggles with his shoelaces and he's 38, so. <laughs> You're right. He, he can't double knot it. He's no. to sketch your the strap bunny ups. ears, yeah. the bunny ears can fuck you sometimes. Mm-hmm. The bunny ears can. Fuck I'm you. fantastic at tying up a boat. Oh, that's, that's good. Can, that's yeah. good. You can hang in Jupiter then. Oh yeah. yeah. I whip that thing around like nobody's business. Mm-hmm. Is that the kind of knot you had to do? No. No, I wish. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had some cleats to tie to. I'd be all right. But that wasn't the case. What is the hardest challenge you have done so far? The hardest things we've done so far. The like episode one was the trinasium. Yeah, that one I was the most scared of the whole time, and that's probably and I and I passed, and I but I was I mean you're 350 feet in the air, looking down over this river, walking on two metal bars, and I I was so scared, like you look down you're disoriented. I was so scared, so I couldn't fail. Like right. fear was more of like like was what made me pass it, and I would I, I blocked everything out, looked at like a little rock all the way across the mountain. And just, I mean, but I was shit in my pants. Did you see it, La? It's hor. It's just horrifying. talking about know, it. It feels like an elephant just sat on my chest. Yeah. I don't like it's heights. I'm like, I could bars. not do that. And and you're, and then you get to the like the middle, and there's something you have to step over. Yeah, step over a wooden plank, which like you don't look down. You can't see what you're stepping over. Oh you know God. where to put your foot. So you're just guessing. 
And staff is, are they, because this is what I wanted to ask, they are obviously hard on you guys, but they also seem to be, like, guiding you and rooting for you. Were, are they looking at you in that challenge and being like, you got this, come on? I couldn't really tell. Yeah, no, they're, they're not setting us every second of the way. Like they, okay. they're, they're, they're analyzing us. They talk about us. You know, they have a debrief that they do afterwards, and, and they just go through each person for about 30 minutes, about the whole day, wow. what they got to attack on this person because they're trying to find our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. They're trying to exploit them, and they're trying to make us better for them. Make you better. Okay, and yeah. So, so, I mean, like, yeah, they, they, I mean, they're ripping us. Yeah. And then sometimes you'll get a little taste of a human out of them. That's what I see. That's what yeah. I, And they're like, great job or something. And I'm like, oh, staff. Because mm-hmm. they're all like ex-Marines, ex, ex whatever. And, and, and like, you, like, I think one of the big driving forces for me was earning their respect. Mm. You know, I wanted to have their respect by the end of all this. Did you earn it? You're not allowed to? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> no, I'm very excited. I have to ask you. Do you believe in a higher power, like God, universe, whatever it may be? So when you're doing this, did you ever punt it off? Because I know you said it was more than just a competition. This was like to build you, build Mm -hmm. more characters, see what, what strength you didn't know existed. Was there a time throughout this process where you were like, I have to hand it over? Because you're a fucking athlete, right? Where you had to punt it to a higher power to be like, I... I literally cannot do this, and uh, something else needs to take over. I, no, I, I think I'm crazy and stupid enough to think I can do anything. Okay. You know, um, but there was moments in time where I'm in it, and I'm just, you know, I'm struggling, and and you just got to figure out, like, your why and what's your reason for it, you know? And, and I think for me, a lot of my reasons why was, as I felt like since football, since – coming into a little bit of fame, like I lost my edge a little bit. I lost what made me who I was. And because um, I got comfortable, you know, it's easy to get comfortable. And I wanted to find that dog again. Mm. And so, I mean, there, I was pushing myself to the brink, you know, like over and over and over again. And I do remember this. Though. I was like, because there's, there's like two ways to go out. You get hurt or you quit. And I was like, running full speed down this mountain. I was like, I would not mind tripping and, like, breaking my collarbone <laughs> right now. Like, if, if, my, if my leg snaps, like, ooh, oh my my, you know? But, like, I, I, you know, like, that's how brutal it was. I heard from Sandoval. I was on a gondola with him. I won't tell you why. You'll see it next season. <laughs> was it romantic? Was, or? No. God, no, Tyler. Someone had to ask. Absolutely (laughs) not. (laughs) I've done this thing where I'm like, you know what? They have all of these things, so I'm going to let these things slide. At this point in my life, if there's even one box that you did not check, even if it's all physical, you got to go. That's crazy. You got to (laughs) go. He said that's that's crazy. crazy. That really is crazy. I hear you, though. That's what trauma will do to you. Really? Yeah. Where Maybe we gotta you work experience something, you take a 30,000 foot view on your life, and you're like, fuck it. I'll be by myself. If you don't check every box, I don't have to check every box, but you <laughs> must check every box. <laughs> I guarantee the person you marry doesn't check every box. I guarantee it too. This is going to go away. This is mm-hmm. just this is just this temporary. Is I know you feel like it's not, but it all is. All right, here we go. You, you all are psychoanalyzing me again <laughs> and doing all the things. This is what I'm saying. I would never, ever hate, touch that. I hate when people talk about boxes. Yeah. Uh. Mm. Because like, I think you got to be open to everything. Except when you've been open to everything and you're like, then you look at your life and you're like, you know, being open to everything did not quite serve me the way I thought it would. I like a tight box. Yeah, it's a tight, he, uh, Easton likes Love a tight a box. tight box. <laughs> like a tight box. Wait, can I ask, because I really want to know, speaking of tight boxes, did anyone on the show hook up? Was there any, because Ooh. you're sleeping on cots next to each other. Also, though, you're in a room where you've just sweat all day. Yeah, I, I don't feel know like if it I'm probably smells and it's disgusting. Yeah, but when you do don't, you shower? I feel like you don't know if it stinks because you all smell the same way. It's like if you eat garlic, but someone else eats garlic yeah. and it like counteracts the garlic. I showered twice. Like you showered twice a day. No one's no one's hot, right? You know. Like, yeah. You showered twice a day. Period. No, period. Tyler, what? Oh. <laughs> oh, is that all you're allowed, or is that no, all? No, it's shows like all like we had like time and energy for. I could. Oh, see, I wouldn't shower like, either. If to, I was, to, I just lay. In to bed. shower, you got to go outside, right, oh, I'm in the freezing already. cold. Yeah. And, and go into this shower. That's you know, the shower actually had hot water, but, okay. but we couldn't. No one could figure it out for the first two days. So once we figured out the hot water, like that, then that was like a plus. 
but we'd go out and shower and then like but you're doing it on like time when you could possibly be sleeping and so it's like a trade-off and like you're, you're just gonna get shitty again the next day so what's the point so no one hooked up or you can't tell us no one no one hooked up mm-hmm. okay what about um somebody t- something's telling me somebody hooked up i know i feel like there's a little hanky panky but i guess we can't <laughs> something's panky. telling me that the team's in the room and we anything. can't okay, talk oh, about okay it. well what about fights we can't fights? know that either like you guys are sleeping next to each other. We already saw a little um, tension between Brian Austin Green and and uh, Black China, aka Angela White. We saw some tension there. Yep, <gasps> that came out of nowhere. That really? was wild. Yeah. What was it? What was it? It was oh. like Brian poking. Brian was poking, and you don't poke Angela White, Black China. I, I no, she has found saying, no, no. She has found Jesus. You do not poke her, no. and she was done with it. And she's like. Do, are you trying to step? Don't like she said, I'm not the one. And I said, That's Lala. I wish. <laughs> I wish that was Lala. She's a badass. But yeah. Yeah. There well. was some. Um, so are we gonna see more drama? Um maybe. You know, there's there's probably some drama here. Okay. Some there's probably bickering that I didn't really know about. Okay. I'm not really a drama person. I didn't okay. need the drama, by the way. Yeah. No. We don't it's need a, it, yeah. it's enough it's for me to itself. watch you 350 feet in the air walking on a tightrope. Like mm-hmm. that is enough drama but for me. I think the, the show it, it strips everyone to their core, mm-hmm. so you kind of get the like the vulnerable real side of them. You don't get much drama. You get more people helping each other mm-hmm. than you get. Yeah, some people get pissed off and annoyed with each other, and like. I got pissed off at everybody at a certain point in time. Like, yo, shut up, you yeah. know, to multiple people, you know? Yeah, it's a mental game. Even even JoJo, who I love the most probably, like, since leaving the show, she'd piss me off sometimes because she'd be on my ass about my outfit, you know? <laughs> about about wearing the right shit, you it's know? Right. And I'm like, JoJo, I just want to sit in my bed and do nothing. Leave me alone. But, but then, like, I will get called out and I'd be late because I'd be getting dressed. And I'm like, damn it, JoJo was right, you yeah. know? <laughs> That's when men get the most pissed off is when they're told to do something and then the woman's right. Mm, yeah. And generally that <gasps> happens a lot. Never. So you bonded with JoJo the most? Yeah, I say JoJo. Um, Aaron Jackson, I bonded with a ton. She was like the bunk next to me. Um, Nick Vial and I got close. Oh, yeah, Nick Vial. Cody on Miller. It. Like those were probably wow. the people I talked to the most. What were your thoughts on Tom Sandoval? Did you talk to him at all? Yeah, I mean, he was the, the bunk to my, to my right. So what did you gather from him? Um, An outsider who doesn't know much, keeps out of the yeah. drama. What are your thoughts? I think Tom lives in Tom's world. You know? Okay. Um, he, I mean, like, so Tom, first day, I'm like, I, I know Scandaval now. I'm like, so I'm kind of keeping my eye on this guy. I'm like, what, what is this guy going to do? You know, first day, somehow his clothes and my clothes get mixed up. So I'm wearing, like, size smalls on everything. Oh, and he I'm, did it. I'm like, tra- did it. I'm, like, trapped in my, my clothes. You know, I can barely, like, move my legs and anything. And he's wearing my stuff, and he's, like, flapping his arms in the wind, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> but but so, so he's like, yo, I think you have my clothes. Let's switch. I was like, thank God. Because, you know, so we go in the back, and we're switching. And we're switching, like, in, like, a warm area. All of a sudden, staff comes in. What the hell are you doing? Is this some country club y'all are in, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, damn, this dude already got me in trouble, you know? <laughs> like, he is just as bad as they say he was, you know? <laughs> And then he, like, he got in trouble later because, like, he didn't listen about, like, the, the pouring the water with JoJo and all that. And they're doing, like, Uptown. So I'm like, damn, he just gets in trouble everywhere he goes, you know? <laughs> wow. And it's so interesting to hear your perspective on it because from his point of view, he was killing the game. But but no, but no. But let me go. Let okay, me go. keep going. Keep going. <laughs> but then, like, you get to see Tom around, you know, all of us. Tom was always helpful, was always helping people out. Um, like, he he cared. And you can tell he gave his full effort. Like he he was a beast. I'm not gonna lie. Like he beasted these challenges. Like he was very impressive when it came to all the missions, everything we did. Um, I'm shocked. Yeah, I'm actually not. Wow. He's he's never been my most favorite person, right? Mm. And just in my own journey of healing, I've had to let a lot go. Not only. Because it wasn't serving me, but just, I, I'm not going to get in, like, I'll talk myself into a hole. But with him, he's always given a lot to, whether it's putting a costume together or if he's competing in something, like, small. I remember we played dodgeball um, for one of our seasons, and he freaking killed that. Like, he just knows how, 
when you take someone who went through what he went through, granted he put it on himself, right? But the world turned against him. He was like public enemy number one. You mentally have to get right. He would go out and still play shows knowing that people were going to boo him, yep. hate on him, and still give a performance, even if it sounded like nails on a chalkboard. He fucking came in and did his did his thing. So that does not shock me that he showed up and killed everything he did. Yeah. I, wow. I think everyone needs to have their own belief in themselves like Tom does. You know, like Tom Tom full-blown just goes and is in Tom's world and just goes for it, you know? Yeah. Um, And it's like a good thing and a bad thing, you know, because sometimes you don't have awareness for others, you know, and – that could hurt you in team atmospheres and whatnot. But I, I'll give it to Tom. He laid it all on the line, and I can respect – I like, what I love about the show is this show peels back all the layers, and you get to see the real, raw version of that person. We get to see it even more because we're living next to it every day, mm -hmm. but you all get to get a taste of it. And so I think everyone who goes on the show leads the show a better person. And they can reflect – like because you do a lot of reflection. You do a lot of talking about what you've gone through in your past. And you, there's a lot of growth when you leave. So I think, you know, I, I could say, give everyone a chance on this show. If you like using debit over credit, don't you think it's time to also get rewarded? Well, now you can with Discover Cashback Debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases. Plus, there are no fees, period. We're talking date nights, thrifting the latest trends, nights out with your friends, and it's now earning you cash back with Discover Cashback Debit. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank. Member FDIC. I'm going to go back to last season because that's the one that we've completed and I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want to get phone calls from, who was it, Fox, telling me that I'd, <laughs> I done fucked up. Bravo's <laughs> enough for me. I got enough on my plate. But when um, Jamie Lynn Spears... They had to do a water challenge, and then they called her into the room where she talked to the coaches, and she broke down because she has a fear of water. It takes her back to when her daughter was drowning, and she had to save her, and it was, like, gut-wrenching. Mm -hmm. So I know how it works. Obviously, we don't get to see everything, but I can only imagine how much you guys have to break down to your very core yep. to get through this. And, and, I mean, that, and then you have to rely on each other. So, like, no matter how bad y'all may think Tom is in that world out here, in this world, I had to rely on him. And he had to show up, you know, or else we're, we're pissed at him. The staff's pissed at him, you know. So you leave with a different respect for each other because you went through some shit together. Yeah, and they don't even let you, or at least it seems from what I've seen, it's not like, like, I think Tara or, or Tara, did she say Tara? Tara, Tara Reid was the leader of the line in the second episode challenge. And it's not like they let the team members pass her. So she's struggling with her bag, and she's up in front. And they're in a line, and if she's going slow, everyone has to go slower behind her. So that's when Tyler So grabbed. you have to stay with the person who's the slowest? Well, yeah, all of you? It was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I mean, because, like, you know, you, you got Tara, you know, leading the way. So I was like, I can go at this pace forever, <laughs> you know? And they, so, like, it was always – but then once those people start getting eliminated, it gets tougher and yeah, tougher and tougher. I'm sure. That's – I also want to ask because I just looked in my phone. So there's a shot in either first or second episode of a rat. A rat. A rat. Jessica doesn't even walk phobia, in New York phobia. City because she's afraid of seeing Oh, yeah, we, we had this one rat <laughs> that we kept trying to catch. That is – fucking disgusting <laughs> and i take back everything it was a goal to be it was a goal to be on special forces of mine one day i that's not a goal anymore because there was a rat <laughs> crawling on a boot and they shot it by the way they had it it was a shot and Wait, i they shot the rat no 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 one's shooting anything they got no, a shot from they got the a camera shot of it and i freaked out immediately so i need to know is was there just one rat so there was one rat that kept coming in and out, and we. Kept, oh, how do you know it was like, just one? Well, we think it's just one, you know. Oh, but we like we like we tried making like a, we, we didn't have much supplies, so we, we like took tape and put it like you know tape or, like, <laughs> or not tape but like band aids and put like the sticky side up, so we we're hoping it would like step on it and catch it, you know. And then just I'm gonna pass it. out. And what would you do with it once you caught it? We would have probably cooked it or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's horrific. I, I would have made Jack Osborne and like Bodie Miller, the dads of the group, handle it because I'd be where you are. No, 
Running. you just let him chill. Let no, the do you rat under, live. No, no, you're sleeping. And she like crawls on you. Like Bodie one time, yes. one time woke up because he thought he felt it. You know, like we and all like, we all were paranoid because of it. No, I I'd be out. Cuddle. Don't put me underwater for five minutes. Make me crawl on the thing. But you, I see a rat. I'm out. I'm going home. <laughs> Goodbye. That was wild. That was the wildest part of the entire show that I've seen so far. That's crazy. And it was two seconds. <laughs> That's, That's the wildest part, <laughs> yeah. Jessica. No, it was two seconds of a rat crawling, and I said, I'm done. I'm out. I'm going home. <laughs> Send me home. That it was horrific. <laughs> no, like, no, it was bad. Jessica. I Yes, no. Anyway, but I'm at some point, I would like to talk about SNL. With you. Oh well, we were getting to that. That's in my okay. notes. Let's 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 leave it on the rat note <laughs> <laughs> and venture in. You are the only person that's done SNL from Bachelor Nation with Kim Kardashian. Did you lose your goddamn mind? You seem so chill. Like, what were you even like doing it? It was cool. Uh, I, it was cool. Yeah. Was <laughs> it was say, so like relaxed. This. He's chilling it, like this. It, what did what did Kelsey? Did you see uh, Travis Kelsey's mom get in trouble the other day? Or, what what she, did she do? Trouble? She said something about how I was hanging out with Taylor Swift. It was okay, you know. <laughs> What a badass. She's going to get dragged. Um, Don't drag so, her. So, yeah, Kardashians, it was okay. No, um, I, uh, no, it was great. Um, so I was literally at a wedding, the, the like the pre-wedding party Friday in South Carolina, got the call, and I'm like, this has got to be bullshit, you know? So I sent it to my managers at the time, and they're like, no, this is the real deal. Like, do you, like, you should do it. I'm like, damn, well, I'm about to miss my boy's wedding, you know? Who cares? Who cares? He'll get yeah. married again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, And I, like, I'm, like, consulting, like, my, my, like, really country friend and his wife, you know, like, like asking them for, like, you know, what, what I should do. And she's like... She was like, you gotta do it. They, it's Kim Kardashian. No, no. She was like, she's like, Tyler, this is the biggest night of their life. This is their wedding. You can't miss this. This is gonna be, like, their biggest moment. Like, you need to be here. No. And so I was like, you know, I feel bad. But Did my, you say 67% of people get divorced? So, like, we'll be here again in yeah, a few I should have. I should have. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, right. and I was like, you're a trap. Get out of here. And so <laughs> and so I went to my boy who's getting married. I was like, hey, man, like, I got invited to go do SNL. Like, I would have to miss your wedding. Like, what's your thoughts? He's like, dude, go. Yeah. You know? So I was like, all right, cool. I'm out. You know? Yes. Yeah, always ask the dude. Never ask the woman. <laughs> no, no. Which I don't think the wife would have cared either, though. She, she was cool. Just my friend's wife. She's just so country. Oh, uh, they're always cool. the worst. Yeah. So you found out right before, like, like how, Friday, fr wait, Friday, mm -hmm. Friday before Saturday Night Live. Yep. That's how the week works. Just <laughs> 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 but wait, how did you rehearse? I thought it was like a week of rehearsal. You had what? One rehearsal? I had. Yeah. It, yeah it's like we all have like very minimal lines. Yeah. It, it, what was so cool. Like, we're, so we're in this like backstage room and it's all the cast members and like we're all playing poker with sugar packets. You know, I'm sitting there like. Playing with Amy Schumer, Chris Rock, like all these people. Like, Who are they? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, and it's so funny because like these writers would come in, and Chris Rock's like, "No, no, no, I'm gonna say this," and Amy Schumer's like, "I'm gonna say that," and I'm just like, "I'll just take whatever you give me." That. <laughs> I'll say whatever you wrote for. You me. know? Can you imagine if he was like, "Yeah, no, 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 I'm gonna say this." Did you meet Lauren? Lauren, L Lauren Michaels. Oh, Lauren Michaels. No, he just spoke to all of us. So you saw him though. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Like, didn't like, you go to a taping of SNL? I sure did. Last. It was the last, I think it was the finale or whatever they call it. Yeah, it was great. Uh, it I was bailed on it. Michael Che's hot oh, in person. Oh. So is Colin Jost. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> what is the coolest thing you've done so far? Oh, the coolest thing I've done. And don't make it be something like move back to Jupiter, Florida. <laughs> I feel like it's something that we can all be like, Wow. With how chill you are, what gets you going? What gets um, you going? I, I don't know. It's like, it's things that I'm like, damn. I, like, even like the, like the Saturday Night Live was cool. You know, I was like, damn, this is like the like the, the magnitude of what it was. And yeah. Kim Kardashian's episode, like sitting with Chris Rock and like, you know, my dad was like, just get, give me Chris Rock's autograph, you know? And I'm <laughs> and like, did you? I'm like, yeah. And I was Aww. like, I was like, I was like, Chris, like my dad's a huge fan. And he's like, and he wrote like, two dad, be cool. Chris, you Aww, know, that's so cute. And like on the script, you know, and I got a frame for my pops and everything. Like, like, like oh, moments like that are cool. And like, there's like, there's like a few times and like where I'm like, damn, I wish my mom could have saw that. And those are like the moments that like, you know, even like special forces. Like this is like, there was times where I wanted to go home, but this is the coolest shit I've ever done. Like yeah. we're ripping through helicopters through a mountain, like about to hit it, then we go up and we go over. And I'm over and I'm in the back yelling. Everyone <laughs> else is cool as shit, you know. I'm over here like ah. <laughs> 
You know, like there's just things throughout this whole experience that I've done that's been amazing. You know, like I look at, we used to do like New York City runs back in the day, and there'd be like 300 girls at our runs, like that just left. It would be like six o'clock. They would like be running in their like their heels and their jeans and their their, their you know. And I'm like, we run like two miles and like in Central Park, wow. and I, it'd be like, this, I'm like, this is crazy. You know, like like this experience has happened and my life has changed and. There's been moments like that for sure where I'm just like, wow. I'm I'm really glad you take those. I didn't mean to cut you off, no, TT. What did you no, say? Go. Um, I'm glad that you take a beat in the moment to realize how cool your life is because I've noticed recently, I, and I've been this way for a while, where I treat my life like a to-do list, where I think about something and I'm like, let's just get it checked off, mm-hmm. and I have to actively tell myself. In this moment, like a couple weeks ago, I was on Capitol Hill and we were trying to get the Humane Cosmetics Act, you know, in front of Congress for co-sponsors. And I was so nervous because it's something I believe in tremendously. But I was like, I just I want it to go well and I just want to get it done because I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. And I did have to check myself and go like, this is amazing. Like, try to look around you and and make a mental note of this to never forget that you were here because there's going to be a day that in, in an hour from now it's going to be over and you're going to wish it's going to be an impeccable day and you're going to wish you would have sat back and said, yeah. this is amazing. No, it's true. So I'm thrilled that you're doing that, especially at your... You seem much older, actually, than 30. Not much older, but mm-hmm. you seem very mature in the way that you carry yourself. And I'm happy at the age of 30 that you can take a step back from your life and realize how amazing it is yeah no i mean i've been blessed i i like I said i was like a kid who came from 200 bucks in in like a, a construction job dream and you know i just like went on this just for an adventure and fun and it just and it's unfolded to so many things and i think it's sped up what i was ever trying to do you know like i'm, I'm back to doing what i was going to do anyways you know right um and so to me every time i get to go do a like a job in this industry or do something to me I like it's like exciting. It's great. I'm grateful. To me, it's vacation. It's to get out of what I do every day, and so I, I it's it's an honor. Like I love it. Like, I, like because I don't know. Like I've been able to do things where I've been able to put my friends on, my dad on, my people. Like it, to me, that's like if you don't if you can't share with the people you love, then what's the point? What is the point? Mm-hmm. There is no point. Mm-hmm. Put the family on payroll. No. Live the dream. <laughs> <laughs> he says <Ooh>. no. No. <laughs> No. I tried that one. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Fired my brother. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it just don't work out. Yeah, yeah. So we do a thing no. on this show called the ache and relief of the week. So whatever is, like, the high point and whatever was kind of, like, the bummer. Do you want us to give you a minute to think about it? Yeah, so is it, is it, I guess it's Monday, so I got to think about last week, huh? Yeah. Um, the ache and the relief of the week. And it doesn't have to be intense. It could be like someone cut you off on the freeway. No, I, I think, um, you know, I, I put myself under a lot of pressure um, with work, with with uh, everything I'm doing. You know, I'm in restaurants. I'm in a lot of these, you know, in construction and all these things. And I get so stressed out about, you know, keeping keeping it going, you know, keeping I have employees that I'm responsible for now, you know, and I'm looking at some of the jobs right now. I'm like, I'm getting my ass kicked. You know, like I'm losing money on these jobs. I'm like, fuck. You know, and like last week, I looked at like the bank account for one of the jobs. I'm like, this shit is not going good. And like that was like a huge ache. I'm like, you know, I I don't want to fire. I don't want to get rid of people. So it's like, how do I keep it going? And, I, and like I think that's like the constant stress and like ache. It's like a, it's like a every week ache. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um and like then like the relief to it was is like, oh, I got this job came through. So I was like, okay, well I can take from here to, to cover up for this. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and a lot of these things that that are hurting me right now are going to be like the things that are going to help me and propel me down the road. So I think it's like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for what's coming, but it's, yeah. it's taking a lot out of me to get there. Yeah. But like, that's the, that's what makes things worth having mm-hmm. like so great. Right. Yeah. I, like this past year I put myself through like, like, since 26 going on the show, it's been fun. It's been appearances, getting paid this and, and doing social media this and getting paid that and, like, doing all these crazy fun things. But then this last year, I was like, I, I want to, like, I, 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 got, I started a construction company. I wanted to put myself to the test. I did all these things, and I put myself to the test. And I'm paying for it, you know. It, it hurt, and it was brutal. But I know 
like a year from now, it's going to be a different story. Of course. Mm-hmm. But you just have to keep plugging away at it. You got a good attitude. Yeah. I dig it. Thanks. Jessica, is your ache the rat you saw on Special Forces? No, but that should be. No, my relief um, is, and I've been, I'm so excited to share this. So uh, everyone knows about my gold jewelry um, adventure. Looked through all my DMs. Thank you guys so much for the recommendations. Found Darling Gems. She sends me this. She sends me these. Oh, damn. She sends me this. She sends Lala. She sends me this. She sends Lala 1111. The jewelry is phenomenal. All $30, most $30 or less, and I just love it, and I want to thank her because that was so kind. I never expect, by the way, gifts. I was literally, truly looking for recommendations, but Veronica, I love you. You're a freaking angel. And my ache is going to be a little um, darker, a lot darker, but my ache is freaking... um, Israel yep. under attack by true terrorists. It's horrifying. Not going to get emotional talking about it, but I mean, obviously, it's something to get emotional about. It's horrifying mothers, children's families being held hostage. It's just these videos are heart wrenching, and I, it's, I believe it's happening, and it is happening, and we can't ignore it, and we just have to amplify it. But that's yeah, that's my ache of the week. I share your ache. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, actually your ache as well. If we get too deep into it, I will be sobbing yeah. on the floor. Same. Um, so that is my ache. My relief. Oh, my relief is that I get to kind of have some alone time. And if I want to masturbate, I don't have to worry oh, about my, you know, you know. my. Yes, honey. <laughs> Easton and my mom are headed to Utah. Bye. <laughs> I'm about to have a hate day. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> We're getting hot. We're getting that, hot. That is my, I'll miss you guys. I'm not going to miss you now. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your ache and relief? Just really picture what you? your sister's doing while you're gone. Oh, no, you know? I'm excited oh, to get the please don't. fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm excited to be two states away while you're vooting your ass off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to go to Utah, and uh, that's my relief and ache all in one. Oh, oh we're all the sense. same. Yeah. I dig that. Yeah. Um, TC, it was the best time ever having you on the pod. You're looking gorgeous. We hope you and Bryn procreate. <laughs> and she moves us. to Jupiter. <laughs> we got to get her signed up for Jupiter, I guess. <laughs> we got to get right. her signed up for Jupiter. Hey, you sold all of us. So yeah. I right. think that. I'll even put a good word in, and that's saying something. All yeah. right. All right. I thought I was going to be fighting, but <laughs> it's like I'll bow down to you. Oh, man. he's a I guy's guy. You guys, I want to thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Give Them La La podcast. Tyler, where can we catch special forces? Fox Monday nights at 9 or next day on Hulu. Love it. Thank you guys so much. I love you. Drink responsibly on this hump day. We'll catch you next week. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you next week.